Hello friends, welcome to today's operating system class and in this class we will see the directory and disk structure from 4th unit um, and in today's class we will see the disk partitioning and what are the advantage of uh, disk partitioning after that a uh, typical file system organization uh, then storage structure and the types of file system in Solaris and these are the things we will see in today's class. So based on the size and applications there are thousands of applications and sometimes billions of files may be there in the computer system and these files are stored on random access storage devices including hard disk, optical disk and solid state disk. Okay, All those files will be stored in um, the random access storage devices which is nothing but the secondary storage devices. secondary storage devices ok hard disk optical disk and solid uh, state disk are called as secondary storage devices see in a single folder we are having so many hundreds of files are there in in this particular single folder we are having so many files so uh, when come to the entire computer system we are having billions of files may be there in some computer systems ok so we have to uh, save all those files only in the secondary storage devices and these storage devices can be subdivided into fine grained controls ok here we are having very very large size of the secondary storage device when compared to main memory the secondary memory size is very high ok that memory will be divided into fine grained control and that is called as partition ok ok that partitions into quarters uh, now this may hold by a separate file system for example windows file system and this may be hold by unix file system ok so in each quarter we can store a separate file system right now the storage device can be collected together into raid raid is nothing but redundant array of inexpensive disk ok which contains a collection of uh, disk and that uh, will be provided to protection from the failure of single disk ok the raid contains collection of so many disk suppose if we follow any of the raid technology then if there is any failure in this particular disk then we can easily retrieve the data from this particular disk ok for that we can use this raid technology and we will see this raid in uh, forthcoming classes and now let us see the advantage of disk partitioning here partitioning is very much useful for limiting the size of individual file system ok this is very big advantage of disk partitioning for example this is our disk normally the secondary storage disk is very uh, huge in volume ok now we are going to partitioning this particular size for one file system ok means we are going to utilize only this much uh, items that is this much volume for this particular file system then we can easily partitioning this one ok and second one putting multiple file system types on the same devices see this partitioning may be used for windows file system and this partitioning may be used for uh, for example unix file system ok so in the same disk we can use multiple file systems ok and the other portions may be used for some other general users some other users or some other random purpose right ok so this is the uh, advantage of partitioning and next let us see the disk volume that is any entity containing a file system is called as volume ok see here this is our disk and this particular portions contain a separate file system hence this is called as the volume ok and the volume may be a subset of a device so now this is a different subset of device and otherwise a whole device ok sometimes the whole device may be used for a separate file system or multiple devices linked together into a RAID set ok so volume may be anything the volume may be subset of device 
or the very whole device or it may be linked the multiple devices okay that will form the raid set now each volume is otherwise called as virtual disk okay this volume is called as virtual disk for example uh, c drive d drive uh, e drive these are called as separate disk right this volume also stores multiple operating systems okay in c drive we can store windows operating system and d drive we can store unix operating system so dual operating system we can implement in a single computer system okay this is also possible and now let us see the directory in a disk each volume that contains a file system and its raw data okay raw data is nothing but the information about this file system and this information is kept in entities in device directory device directory is nothing but simply the directory okay and it is otherwise called as volume table of contents okay see uh, example the windows explorer you have seen the windows explorer if you right click the windows button then you will get the windows explorer okay this is the example of windows explorer right the device directory records the information such as name location size and type of all files on that volumes okay and now let us see the storage structure a computer system has multiple storage devices and these devices can be sliced up to volumes that holds the file system for example in our computer system we are having c drive d drive e drive and etc okay each drive uh, may be called as a volume okay each volume may hold the file system now a computer system may have zero or more file systems that means if we we can follow the single file system for all the drives or we can follow a separate file system for all the drives right okay uh, for example solaris system may have dozens of file systems of dozen different types let us see all those types one by one the types of file system in the solaris operating system okay first one is tmpfs that is nothing but temporary file system okay that is created in the main memory and the contents of this temporary file systems will be erased if the system reboots or crash if the system crashes the temporary file contents will be erased or if the system reboots then also the contents of temporary files will get erased and next one is object file system that is the virtual file system that gives debuggers access to kernel symbols okay obj uh, fs that is object file system which is otherwise called as virtual file system next one is ctfs ctfs means contact information that is a virtual file system that maintains contact information to manage which process starts when the system boots and must continue to run during the operations the next one is lofs that is a loop back file systems that allows one file system to be accessed in the place of another one and a procfs that is the virtual file system that presents information on all process as a file system next one is ufs and gfs these are general purpose file systems so these are all the types of file systems in solaris operating system 